Dominic Cummings has been giving evidence for hours in front of a, a super committee of the health and the science committees in Parliament, going over pretty much every, everything that happened uh, over the, uh, the past year until he left government in November. Um, on the face of it, he's been very candid, but uh, his session hasn't been without its moments of hypocrisy. So let's go through some of those moments right now. Right at the start of his evidence, Cummings talked about key people in government going skiing uh, in February and indeed the Prime Minister uh, going on holiday for two weeks. The government itself, and Number 10, was not th operating on a war footing in February on this in any way, shape or form. Lots of key people were literally skiing in the middle of February. Now, Cummings then went on to claim that he didn't have a single day off during the whole time he was in government, but... Um, there was, of course, his infamous trip to Durham, um, including his uh, little sojourn to Barnard Castle. And if anything, that had probably more of an effect on the public's willingness to uh, follow the rules than pretty much anything anybody else in government did. One of the huge problems we had throughout was things leaking. Now, Dominic Cummings made it very clear uh, that he was um, very angered uh, during his time in government by the sheer volume of leaks that were coming out from even top-level meetings, such as uh, COBRA meetings. The meetings are of access, the Excess Committee, which was supposedly the secret negotiation committee for Brexit, which, which operated out of the COBRA rooms at my request from summer 2019, leaked like a sieve continually. He said that he didn't attend them. He advised the Prime Minister not to attend them because he said that uh, things would just leak from them. And so he didn't really want them being used as a forum for discussing sensitive subjects. And yet, uh, he has been repeatedly accused of uh, leaking things himself, he admits. He did talk to journalists uh, during that time. He indeed leaked his own evidence the night before he came to the committee to, uh, to give his evidence. Cummings's view, according to what he's told MPs, uh, was that leaks are hugely damaging because uh, it means that uh, ministers can't discuss policy, uh, can't try and um, make policy, uh, without uh, th th those policies leaking before they've even been finalised. Was COVID the, the most important matter uh, that you dealt with from, say, from January onwards? One of the um, central uh, accusations made against uh, Boris Johnson and the government as a whole uh, from Dominic Cummings' evidence was that in January and February uh, of uh, 2020, uh, they weren't treating COVID as a, as a priority at all. In no way, shape or form did the government um, act like in January like it was the most important thing. It didn't act like it was the most important thing in February, never mind in January. But people in government weren't really talking about um, COVID. They were too busy working on other things. Now, what were they working on? Well, he didn't say. But obviously, as we know, one of the main things they were working on was Brexit, which, of course, was his number one priority. I think that the Secretary of State for Health should have been fired for at least 15, 20 things, including lying to everybody in multiple occasions, in meeting after meeting in the, in the Cabinet room and publicly. Dominic Cummings also accused uh, many of his uh, former government colleagues of lying uh, during the pandemic. In particular, um, he saved uh, the, uh, the worst accusations for the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. He said he had lied about the uh, preparedness for, for the pandemic. He said he'd lied uh, about the PPE situation, saying everything was fine, and then it turned out it was far from it. And yet, did Dominic Cummings ever lie? Well, what we now know is that when he gave his famous press conference in the Rose Garden of Downing Street, he did lie. So I ended up giving the whole Rose Garden thing, where what I said was true, but we left out a kind of crucial part of, the, part of it all. If I just basically sent my family back out of London and said, here's the truth to the, to the public, I think people would have understood the situation and it was a terrible misjudgment not to, not to do that. If we don't know whether uh, people in government are telling the truth, that's hugely important. And the problem is that can we rely on what Dominic Cummings is saying about who was telling the truth or not if we don't know whether he's telling the truth? But what we have to remember is that uh, this is only part of the story. He's given his side of the story. We haven't heard other people's side of the story. Before everyone decides that Dominic Cummings has given us the final version of history, we need to wait for all those other people to give their side of the story.